bursting at the seams with this word. I'm bursting at the seams with this word. I want to get right into it. I want to get right into it. We're going to start out in 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 through 13. So this is when God sends Samuel to find the next king because Saul couldn't act right. He sent Saul on a mission and then Saul, he decided to have his own mission with greed. And so God tells Samuel, there's another king I want you to appoint. So he sends Samuel for the next king and it reads, it started out at six, it says, God sent Samuel to find the next king of Israel. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, these are the sons of Jesse, right? So the first one he saw, Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things, be, <laughs> come on. The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. Yeah. A man in a three-piece suit. Yeah. A man with a briefcase. Yeah. A man that looked like he got a word. Yeah. Come on. God's not considering that. Yeah. People look and they overlook things because of what they're looking at through their earthly eyes. Yeah. But God said, I'm not looking at that. It's what's in him that concerns me. Come on. And then he goes on, he say, Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him to pass him by. He passed Samuel by. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Sama pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven sons. Seven of his sons. Well, he had eight, but he had seven to pass Samuel by. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. I see the lineup. They look the part. I see the lineup. They might even speak the part. I see the lineup. And you are their daddy, and I know that you feel like that these are the ones. But there's another one that you haven't showed me. There's another one. He said, look, he goes on and he says, so he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Because look, God sent me here. And he said that these are not the ones, so surely there must be one yeah. that I've come to find. There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. He's serving. He's attending the sheep. He's serving. He's attending the sheep. He's out in the field. He's attending the sheep. He's dirty. He's attending the sheep. He don't look like them right now. He's attending the sheep. Samuel said, send him, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health. He had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, in the presence of the previous lineup. He anointed him. And from that day on, the Holy Spirit, the Lord came upon him and rested on him. God told me to come and tell man, the people I've called you to are awaiting your arrival. God said, Brenda, I need you to speak to the son that is in man. I need you to speak to the son. Because look, 
The enemy has been roaming the earth, but for some reason in this season, he's been attacking the man. The man in the home, the head. He's been bringing division, causing you to wrestle with your identity. And God said, I am awaiting your arrival because I've called you. You have been called to a certain set of people and he's wrestling with you in your past for a particular reason because he wants to cripple you and stifle your growth. Because if he can cut the knees from under you, how can you walk in your purpose? He wants to mute you so you don't speak to what I've given you. You don't speak to the sons and the daughters I bless you with. You don't speak to the wife that I've given you. You don't speak to the purpose. You don't speak to the future. Yeah. You can't see it. You can't see it. But God said, you are the one. You are the one. He wants to tell you you don't look the part, but you are the one. Yeah. You might be in the field right now tooling, but you are the one. You might not look as as healthy as the other ones, but you're healthy. You're healthy. You're healthy. You have to speak over yourself. Come on, you you can have your seat. Look, God told me, he said, you have a house full of men. My husband and my sons. And they all need other, they all need different things from me. But there is this one particular thing that I am able to give them all. And that is affirmation of what I see in them, what God has shown me in them. And it is my duty as a wife and as a mother to speak in them and to help develop in them what God has spoke to me. And some of you may say, well, look, I don't have that. But God said you do because you have me. And everyone needs affirmation. Everyone needs to be reminded of who they are. Everyone needs to be reminded of what they're being called to, their purpose, that you are valuable. You are valuable. You might have been out in the field of shame, but you're valuable. You might have been out in the field toiling away at things that were not of God, but you are valuable. And God said, I am calling you in to be anointed, to walk in your kingship. I am calling you in that in this season, my voice will be louder than any other. It will trump over everything that's been spoken to you. I am calling you in to your rightful place because there are people that are waiting for you. Not for the person beside you, to the left or the right of you, but they're waiting for you. You are the one, I wrote. You've been in the field of shame, in the field of not being enough, in the field of fear, in the field of doubt. God has called you to pave a new road for your bloodline. Because the enemy wants to stop you where you are. He wants to say, hey, you've been in infidelity. How could anyone listen to you? He wants to wrap your mind up in shame. He wants to say, hey, you couldn't even budget the money that your spouse trusted you with. How could anybody else listen to you? Do your kids even have your ear? Do your job even trust you? And God said, look, I want to peel back the things and speak to the sun in you. I want to peel back the layers of you, man, and I want to speak to the sun in you. Here's the thing about in Samuel. They asked several times for Jesse, several times. When Samuel went looking for him, God told him to bring Jesse to the table, which was his father. Invite him to the table because he knew that he would bring his sons, right? And then when Saul needed, when Saul needed David, He went to his father. He asked, who's his father? Jesse. And then later on, when David went to, he defeated Goliath, they sent for him again and said, who is that? Who is his father? And they said, Jesse. So in the things that transpired in in the Bible, they always said, who is he? They identified him as a son. He's somebody's son. You are somebody's son. And God wants to unpack 
the son version of you because they are things that he wants to get to the neglect that he wants to get to there are things that he wants to feed that maybe you took to somebody else but they did not know how to speak to it so God said I want to peel back the onion and I want to see the son the one I created my beloved one the one who scarred up the one who life tried to run the bus over you and God said I see your scars but I also see you I also see you I see you I see you I see you I saw the wicked thoughts you have I saw the things that you think about yourself but I still want you I still want you you are the one you're the one they've been waiting for you're totally tending to the sheep toiling and toiling overlooked and they don't see you but God said I saw you the whole time could it be that I was preparing you could it be that I was preparing you listen to this God has always had David close to the throne when Samuel goes and he anoints David that is the first throne. When the Holy Spirit falls on him, he becomes one with the Father. He becomes, he, that's just the first throne he's connected to. Then the second one, because he's supposed to be the king of Israel. So his spirit falls on Saul and Saul needs someone to play the harp because he's going crazy in his mind. And so they send for him. They send for David. And David comes and he meets the need there. And he's close to the throne of Israel of being king. And then his older brothers, they go off into war with Saul, right? And then David's father gives David food to take to his brothers. And the father also says, he says, feed their commander too. You are closer, you are closer to the throne. You're closer, you're closer, you're closer. So look, he's always been close to the two thrones, that he, the throne of God. And then he's also been close to the throne that he was going to be the king over. And then the word says that he served, he still served his father's house and he also served Saul, right? So he was still getting the tools that he would need to fight Goliath. And he was still serving Saul, the king he would replace. Your trials and your tribulations are not in vain. They're not in vain. They're shaping you. They're not in vain. They're your tools. They're not in vain. They'll also be your weapons. They are not in vain. So when David goes, to feed his brothers while they're on the battlefield because Goliath is, he's on the field and he's talking his trash. It's like, bring your strongest one. Where are you at? This is it. <laughs> and so David, he's bringing the bread to his brothers and their commander, he's like, I could do this. Like, do y'all want to send me? I mean, y'all look scared right now. I mean, y'all look like some cowards. Y'all j- just send me. And they're like, you, come on, man, just go back, go back to daddy's house. And one of the brothers, his, his oldest brother said, I know your heart. You're just here to see what you can get into. Listen, the enemy is whispering that he knows his heart, but God already knew David's heart. That's why he was anointed to begin with. So don't allow the enemy to speak to you that he knows your heart. You know nothing about what God see. I mean, you know a little bit of what he dripped, but you don't know everything. You don't know everything about me. So his brother said, I I know your heart, man. Just go back home to daddy. But it says one of the commanders heard David inquiring and he went back to Saul and told him about this boy that wanted to fight Goliath. And then Saul sent for David. And then David goes up to Goliath I mean, David goes up to Saul. He begins to tell him his story. And he unpacks it. In 1 Samuel 17, 33, he says, 
Saul replied, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Little did he know. <laughs> but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like the one of them, which he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul so said to David, go and the Lord be with you. <laughs> go and the Lord be with you. See, he was still toiling in his fall field, but it was still preparing him for the battle that he was going to go into. Don't despise the road you had to travel. He was toiling in the field. He was fighting lions and bears, trials and tribulations, learning the weapons to work with. Yeah. When he showed up to fight Goliath, Goliath laughed and said, that's all you came with, some sticks and some rocks? Like, are you guys kidding me? five rocks but it only took one and the scripture says when David returned to Saul he had Goliath's head in his hand that was a battle he won and guess what At one of the promises was whoever slayed Goliath would marry Saul's daughter closer to the throne in position in position, access granted, trials and tribulations, overlook, wounded, but God has not forsaken you, but God, though they slay me, yet will I trust him, trust him. He sees every detail about you and he's still crazy about you. He still have a purpose for you. Get the enemy out of your head. And what does Saul say? He tells the commander, he says, go find out who he is. Who is his father? Time and time again, who is his father? And God just keeps saying, speak to the son. Speak to the son. Speak to the son. There is healing with speaking to the son because the son in the man is telling him nobody will listen to you. The son in the man is telling him you're not enough. The son in the man is saying you don't look the part. The son in the man is telling him everything to stifle his growth, but God is saying look, you are the elected one. You're the one I've been waiting for. I am drawing you closer. You are king. Take your rightful place. Don't let the enemy drag you out of your kingship. Don't allow the enemy to talk you out of your seat. Don't allow the enemy to back you down and to a corner. Don't allow the enemy to take away your voice. Because if he takes away your voice, he takes away your passion, he takes away your voice, he takes away your influence. If he takes away your voice, he takes away your position. God is putting the full armor on man to stand in his rightful place yes. for a time such as this. It seems like in the earth, no matter where I look, all I see is divorce. 
You can pull it up on social media. You can look at the news. You can read the tabloids if you want. You can read the newspaper. Somebody is getting a divorce. Homes are being divided. Whether finances, whether affairs, whether I just don't like you anymore. Something is happening in the earth where man is being targeted. Whether sexualities is something is happening in the earth. And God is saying, I am calling man to take his rightful place because you still have a voice. And I said, God, why are you sending me to speak this? And God said, I'm calling you to speak as a mother to a son and tell them, son, I see you. Son, you are anointed. Son, you're going to take your seat as a king. Son, you can pull through, son. God is calling you to more. Son, there are people waiting on you. Son, what do you need from God to move forward? And I feel like God is saying, look, some of you have been reaching out to resources that's been pushing back. And God is saying, look, it's because I couldn't trust them with you. Don't take that personal. Don't take that personal. Because I am going to send you people that are going to love the things about you that I want to develop. You've been through things and they have caused calluses. But guess what? I want to use. I want to use some of that. I don't need you to drop all of it to the wayside. There's something about it I want to use because somebody's over here hurting with it. And I want you to come alongside them and minister in a way that only experience can. Only experience can. Men need men. Sons need men. Sons need fathers. Women need men. Look at the room from the usher standing in the parking lot. Do you not feel safer? Look at the room from the security standing out there in the hallways. Do you not feel safer? Look at the room, the men sitting in the room. Do you not feel safer? You are needed. You are needed. And someone is awaiting your arrival. Look at this. I want to read this to you, Isaiah 43 and 16. This is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves. Come on, life has been knocking you all around. But God is saying, look, I'm about to pave out a road through it. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and they can't get up. They snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old things. Mama didn't love me. Daddy abandoned me. Don't keep going over old things. What happened to you? The wife left me. The kids don't respect. Don't keep going over old things. God said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing in you. A new thing in you. Forget about what's happened. This is a new thing. I'm blowing a fresh wind over you. New armor. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Because if you keep going over the old things, how could you be alert? How could you possibly be alert if your mind has you trapped in the old? Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over the old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? Come on, don't you see it? Look, when your old things start coming up and roaring at you, God is about to do something new. And the enemy wants to use it to hush and to block what is coming forth. And God is saying, look, don't you don't let that don't 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 you don't you let that keep you in that place. I've dealt with you before that. I've dealt with you regarding that. 
quiet the voice of the enemy with what I've spoken over you. Get into the word, get among other men, get among community, affirmations. Men can speak affirmations to each other too. Lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. And we drop down to 19, be alert, be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert. Rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say thank you. The coyotes in the buzzards. Because I provided water in the desert. They rejected me, God, but God still provided water. God still provided water. They didn't see my value, but God still provided water to you. Rivers through the sun-baked earth. Drinking water for the people I chose. The people I made especially for myself. A people custom made to praise him. Brother, you are like a tailor-made suit. Son, you are like a tailor-made suit. Nobody else can step in the place that God has called you to and do what he's called you to do. They would only be second best because God has called you. He's called you. You're the blueprint for it. You're the blueprint for it. He's calling you to pave a new road for your bloodline. And some of you may say, but I, I didn't grow up in a home with a daddy. I'm calling you to pave a new road. And some of you may say, but my, my daddy was verbally abusive. How can I get this out of my system? God said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm calling you to pay for a new road. And then some of you may say, but I, 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 I've seen my mama abuse and I, I don't want to do that. A new thing. I'm calling you to pay for a new road. And some of you may say, I, I, I want to be this man you're calling me to be, but the past keep reminding me of something else. And God is saying, a new, a new, a new thing. Come on, you might have to encourage yourself in this. A new thing. A new thing. A new thing when the old arises. It's a new thing God wants to do with me. Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. But man, God is speaking to the son in you. And he's fathering a part of you that you hid for so long that you have not wanted to expose. And God said, trust me. Trust me with this. Trust me. I'm the God of timing, trust me. I know you thought you should be over this by now. I'm the God of timing. Perfect timing is in my hands. Trust me. God is peeling back the layers. He keeps saying that. He's peeling back the layers to get to the sun. The gentleness, the meekness, just to get to that sun. And as a mother, I want to apologize to the sun. Sorry if my words hurt you. As a mother, I want to apologize to the sun. Sorry if I made you feel like you wasn't enough. Sorry if I brought home my day and wanted you to make me happy. I want to apologize to the sun that the heaviness on me did not have to be the heaviness on you. Apologize to the sun. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. That's not just for girls. You are whole. You are love. You will stand upright. You will walk in your purpose, in your destiny. You are a king and there's a kingship on you. I want to apologize to the son as a mother and speak to him. I see you. I want to get eye level with the son and say, I see you, son. I pray that the grace of God adorns you. I pray that mercy and peace be your portion. 
I pray that nothing stops you. I pray that when hell tries to come up against you, that you let loose a fire, a blaze that will send hell on its way. I pray that you know that you are more than enough. You're not just my son. You're not just your daddy's son, but you are the son of the most high God, the one who you fall under immediately. That when the Holy Spirit fell on you, you fell away from us. And you became connected to the one and true loving God. He is speaking to the son in you so that the man can be whole. So that the man can be whole. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for your love and your kindness towards us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, even for the trials and the tribulations, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you taught us how to fight, Lord, in the spiritual realm and in the natural, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you know everything about us, Lord God. You know everything about us, Lord God, and you're still crazy about us, Father. I thank you, Father, for the men that you have called, Lord God. I thank you for the men in this house, Lord God, how they desire to serve you, Father, how they desire to protect their homes, how they desire, Lord, to be more like you, Lord, and less like their flesh. I thank you, Father, for everything you put in them, Father, everything you're developing, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you give them vision, Father, them, that they were so like eagles, mount up upon wings and soar in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray that you give them authority to speak with us, save the Lord, to speak over their homes, speak over their careers. I pray that they won't feel less than, but that you will show them through visions, through dreams that they are the warrior you have called them to be. And though they may might have taken another road, nevertheless, you are using them to pave a new one for the generation to come. A road that they might not have seen demonstrated, but you're giving them the tubes to pave a new one. You're also giving them brothers to come alongside them and help them. You're giving them brothers to lock arms with them. But when they feel weak, the brother feels strong. You're giving them brothers to speak affirmations over them. You're giving them brothers that even when the spirit of alcoholism, I don't know, God just spoke that, desires to come up, a brother will say, brother, look, brother, I rebuke that taste out of your mouth. And I pray that you begin to open your mouth and speak what God has taken you into. You're giving them brothers that will help them stand firm, ten toes down, and what you are calling them to. Brothers that will help them to remain pure. Brothers that will help them when they're in the field seeking a wife. Bro, not that one. But this is something more you should look for. Not this, bro. That's a, that's quick right there, bro. You something over here. God, I thank you. I thank you that you are calling men into their identities. I thank you that you're calling sons to be healed. I thank you, Lord God that you are calling homes to be whole because it starts there. I thank you, Father, that the anointing will drip from the top and drip down and drip down through the bloodline. I thank you, Lord God, for everything you're doing. We see what's happening in the earth, but we also see what's happening in the spirit. And God said, I'm still God. 
I'm still God. Son, I'm still God. And I'm waiting on your arrival. I'm giving you tools. I've given you tools to cut down giants. I've given you tools to train others to cut down giants too. And someone may say, but I'm not a father. Who said you had to have biological sons? And someone will say, but I, I don't know how to do it. And God is saying, you've lived and you've had trials and tribulations and someone needs to hear your voice. So come off a of mute. Come off a of mute. Your voice is enough. Come off a of mute. Come out of hiding. You are a mentor. Come out of hiding. Come off a of mute. I pray that the buckle of truth be your portion. I pray that you will sustain the full armor of God, righteousness. You walk in peace. I pray for your protection, brother. I pray for your protection, son. The protection over your mind, over your thoughts. I pray for your protection. I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you and forever make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you hope and give you peace because there will come other seasons where you need hope and you need peace. And I pray that he will remind you of who you are and whose you are. There is a new road being paved. David had proven himself to everyone, but God didn't need him to prove himself. His heart was in the right place. And that's how God was able to identify the one. May God bless you. Good morning, church, truly. This is just an extension time of our worship where we come to the altar with our tithe and our offerings and just giving back a little bit to God what he has blessed us with. If you've been around me long enough, you know I always start things off with my granny said sometimes I was blessed to have my grandma close to 101, 101 good years. And something my grandmother always said, she always said, a closed hand never receives anything. You have to keep that flow. You have to keep that flow. And that wasn't an a old a granny type of adage. It's biblical. It's biblical what we're, what we're sowing. And so during this time, I just encourage you to extend your praise and extend your worship and give it. And it's funny, Casey, this is actually my first time doing the offering part. So I was like, oh, okay, what can I tell you? So I'm going to use this couple seconds just to share with you. Um, my husband and I, we're, we're the outreach directors here at church, and we see firsthand where your tithe and where your offerings go to just within the last, I want to say, couple weeks, right, honey? We've been able to give um, as a church to the community. And one thing that's on our pastor's hearts and is so important to us is that we're just not holiday givers, right? What you do, that is truly a seed that is sown. And so what does that look like? Remember when you were little, I don't know about y'all, I always felt like I, I didn't think we were rich per se growing up. I grew up in a very working class family. But when I think back on it now, for instance, I never had to think about a meal, not ever, that I never dealt with food insecurity. I could get up on a Saturday morning, Casey, and I'm going to date myself now, uh, grab my bowl of cereal and turn on my uh, He-Man, Thundercats, um, the 
Jetsons who lie to us because there are no flying planes yet. Um, but, I mean, cars. And so I would just sit there, right? And, and it was never a thing. And I went through my, my weekends, and I had my breakfast, and I had lunch, and we had uh, Sunday dinners. And that was, what, about over 30 years ago. And so right now, for us, we get to see firsthand that they're not kids. Other kids don't have that. And right now, we support a local school where children, because they're not in school on the weekends, they actually don't get to eat as much. And so part of what you've been given has been doing is allowing them. We dropped off so many groceries. They were so happy, y'all, um, non-perishable. We're going to the end of the school year for them. They're like, is this all for us? Are we sharing this with another school? We're like, no, Celebration DC is blessed. And so we're going to be a blessing to you. And so about 40 to 50 uh, kids and families receive bags every Friday they go home with simple things, things that you might not even think is a big deal, but it's a big deal to them. They have oatmeal and snacks and things that they can make on their own during the weekend. So I just encourage you, we are so transparent here at this church to know that all that you give truly goes back to the community. And so I thank you for your time. I thank you with your ears and your hearts for listening. We have multiple ways to give, um, either through the QR code or the ushers are going to um, pass um, the offering buckets around. And so while they do that, I'm going to go ahead in the meantime and just bless our offering. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you that truly this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. And we come giving you, Lord God, what we have, Lord Jesus. And there is no amount that is too little, Lord God, or even too much. We just come before you, Lord God, and we thank you for the flow. We thank you that we have open hands, Lord God, and open hearts, and we are the hands and the feet, Lord God, here. And so, Lord God, I thank you for each family represented. I thank you, Lord God, that as they give, that is truly as your word says, it's going to be pressed down, shaken together and running over, Lord God, and they will receive more, Lord God, not even just monetarily, Lord God, will they be blessed, but with health, Lord God, with protection, Lord God, with wisdom, Lord God, with heads of households, Lord God, with men, Lord God, leaving here with a message within themselves to be bold and never as they were before, Lord God. We thank you for relationship, Lord God, for just being in this space right now. And so we thank you, Lord God, for this offering. We thank you more so for your people. And we thank you for the relationship that you keep building and the community that you keep building within us, Lord Jesus. It is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. So this is a season of above and beyond. In order to kick this year off, we decided as a church, and this is um, an entire church family, to do 21 days of prayer and fasting. So if you have been participating in the 21 days of prayer and fasting, go ahead and give a cheer. You might be hungry, tired, whatever, but the good thing is you're focused on God. Amen. <laughs> But really, this is a time where we center ourselves. We start at the very beginning of the day, 7 a.m. from Monday through Saturday as a community, praying together, supporting each other, encouraging each other. And what's really cool is the church has put together a resource that's available. So it's not too late, even though we're in week two, not too late. You start when you're ready. Uh, you can go on our website. You can scan the QR code and get information about fasting. So if you've never fasted before, if you want to know how you can fast, what different types of fast, all the things, there's an entire resource that's available for you. So you can download that resource, access it, go through the days with us. Um, again, we're in week two, not too late to start. So we're excited for that. It's been really powerful. We've been able to hear from different voices. Shamina was able to share. I was able to share all sorts of people within the community. So you're hearing from different voices, different testimonies about what God is doing in this season. So it's so incredible. Um, so you can either text or you can go to the website. So if you want to text right now, you can pull out your phone and text FAST23 to 703-844-1223. 
three to receive the Zoom link. Again, you can do this online or send that text. So we're excited to be praying and fasting with you this season. All right, well, thank you so much. At this point, we will just uh, bless you. Um, Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face and goodness upon you. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful week. Be blessed and be well.